Now this next tip I have never ever heard in any sort of travel tips video, but it's based on my own experience. It's something I learned and now I incorporate it into my routine every time I travel because it is such a lifesaver and such, such a game changer. Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a great day so far. In today's video, I'm sharing 17 tips for long flights. So it has been a while since I've done any sort of travel video on my channel, but I thought since I have quite a long flight coming up, it was high time I do one. All of these tips are based off of my own personal experience, things that I've learned with traveling so much, especially going on so many long flights. You learn a lot, you get a routine, and I'm gonna share all of my tips and my routine and what I do to help a long flight go by quicker, to be more comfortable, and to help you adjust to that new time zone. If you guys are not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below to join the family. And with that, let's hop right on in, guys. The number one most essential thing for a long flight is feeling and being comfortable. So that means wearing comfortable clothes, especially ones that are layerable. Layerable clothes for long flights, I think, are crucial. So plane temperatures, they fluctuate a lot in the air. Sometimes it's really cold, sometimes it's really hot and you're just sweating. And if you're wearing clothes that are just one layer and you know aren't buildable, I can promise you, you are going to be so uncomfortable. So my recommendation for what to wear on a flight is some sort of stretchy, breathable, flowy type of bottom, whether that's yoga pants, leggings, flowy linen pants, just anything where it's breathable, comfortable, and it's not putting any strain or pressure on your stomach. So mom jeans, Immediate rule out, the worst thing to wear on any sort of flight, especially long flights, it's just, you're gonna have to unbutton them the whole time and then it's just awkward and uncomfortable for you and everyone else. Along with those types of bottoms, I would recommend wearing some sort of loose, breathable tee or tank top. If you're a gal, I would recommend wearing a sports bra over a regular bra, they're just so much more comfortable. Sneakers and socks. And then I would also say to bring some sort of jacket or sweatshirt that you can tie around your waist, you can put it on, you can take it off throughout the flight. Keep your hair up and out of your face throughout the flight. Your hair is going to get greasy throughout the flight, as is your face, and just having your hair on your face is just going to, it's just, there's going to be a lot of oil buildup, and we just wanna make sure that your skin does not break out, especially if you are going somewhere beautiful and cool, and you're gonna be taking a lot of pictures. We don't want a face breaking out. A couple hours before my flight, I always make sure I take the maximum dosage of Airborne. Airborne is just like an immune booster. It's vitamins. It has a lot of vitamin C and I think there's zinc and there's just a lot of good stuff that helps boost your immune system. So your body has a better defense system against all of the germs that are going on in the plane and the airport as you're traveling. Every single flight that I have ever been on, someone is always super sick, coughing, sneezing, like hawking phlegm and it's there are germs floating around everywhere. I like to just give my body the best chance possible. Every single time that I've taken Airborne, I never get sick, but the one time that I did not take Airborne, guess who was sick for two weeks? Me. Something I like to do is once I get settled, once the plane is going, I like to take off my shoes and just chill in my socks. I always go for some like nice tube sock style socks that are warm, comfortable, and breathable. This makes me feel so much more comfortable. And if you don't like the idea of just wearing socks, you can of course bring slippers and wear those instead. But I'm just saying taking off your shoes just feels so nice when you're gonna be on a plane for so long. And of course, when I go to the bathroom, I always put my shoes back on, but as for just chilling in your seat, it feels really nice not to wear shoes. If you're wearing makeup, I would say in the first hour, hour and a half, take your makeup off. Bring some makeup wipes and do your whole skincare routine and just don't wear makeup. Wearing makeup that long on a plane is going to definitely significantly raise your chances of getting some sort of skin breakout. So just take your makeup off, do your skincare routine and just have a nice fresh bare face. If you wear contacts, take them out at the beginning of the flight. I wore contacts for 11 years, so I, I know this one to be very, very true. The air in an airplane is very drying and your eyes are going to dry out and get extremely irritated and red. If you wanna be wearing your contacts when you arrive at your destination, just put them in like 30 minutes before you land. So that way your eyes aren't getting dried out. They're not getting irritated and bothered for no reason. 
A crucial thing that you should have in your personal item handy and ready to go is a reusable water bottle filled up with water. I feel like this one is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, when you get thirsty, you already have your water. You don't have to wait for the flight attendant to come around. And if you get really thirsty, you're covered. You don't have to deal with that like tiny shot glass of water they give you that you drink in like two seconds. You're covered. On the same note, bring some of your own snacks to snack on. When you're on a long flight, you get pretty hungry. And though it's best to stick to the meal times they give you because it's going to help you adjust to your new time zone, sometimes you just get really, really hungry and you need a snack. So having your own snacks is going to come in clutch. This one is especially important if you're traveling with small children because small children are just always hungry. They always want to snack. And also sometimes there's turbulence which delays getting your food. So if you're really, really hungry, it's just great to have snacks. I am always hungry. So I always make sure there's snacks in my bag. Now this next tip I have never ever heard in any sort of travel tips video, but it's based on my own experience. It's something I have learned and now I incorporate it into my routine every time I travel because it is such a lifesaver and such such a game changer. After you eat, immediately after, or at least just pretty soon after, go use the restroom. Do not wait until you have to go. Try to go if you can before the big rush. When you're on a long flight, typically it's a big flight, there's a lot of people on there, and everybody eats around the same time, and everybody's digestive tract works pretty much at the same time. So every time, 30 to 45 minutes after everybody eats, the lines at the bathrooms, they're just gonna get so long, they're gonna be stacked up, and you're going to have to wait a long time to use the bathroom, which is just the worst if you really have to go and you're just like, I need to use the bathroom. But if you can beat that rush, if you go right after you eat, nobody's there yet. Nobody's digestive tract has hit yet. So if you plan ahead, if you plan accordingly, you will beat the lines. Let's talk about adjusting to your new time zone. When you get fed your meal, you have to, have to, have to eat that meal. The flight attendants are feeding you to the new schedule and time zone that you'll have to adapt to, so it's best to eat the food when you get fed it because it'll help your body adjust to your new time zone. The long flight routine that I always follow and that helps me pass time by the best, I always stay up till the first meal and then I always eat for the aforementioned reasons. If the meal they just fed us is dinner, I always make sure to sleep because again, it's going to help your body adjust to the new time zone. And between the first meal and the second meal, I always just try to keep myself either sleeping or doing some sort of very participatory activity that is going to keep me very engaged. For sleeping and falling asleep on planes, I don't really have any like best practices because I am the type of person who can kind of fall asleep anywhere, anytime. I'm always I'm always ready to sleep, but something that always guarantees that I'm going to fall asleep immediately and have a good restful sleep is to not sleep the night before. Now, I know that sounds a little crazy, but if you can just push through and trek through, it is going to guarantee you fall asleep on the plane and you're not struggling. Time. Make sure that you consciously bring something that will help you pass the time. Books, a magazine, crossword puzzles, Sudoku, video games, anything that just engages you and keeps your time busy. Make sure it's one of the first few things you pack and you put it in your personal item. It's kind of a nuisance to have to go up into the thing and just figure out how you're going to get something out of your carry-on. So it's always just best to have it in your personal item, accessible and ready to go. If you're on a really big airplane and it's newer, chances are there's also movies. I love watching movies on long flights. I am one of those people who never gets around to watching movies. So being on a long flight is like my excuse and my heyday for watching all of the movies that I want to watch. on using your phone on the plane, it's going to happen and your phone is going to die. <laughs> it just will. So bring a portable charger or if your plane is fancy, they might have chargers. So at least make sure you have your cable. And again, make sure you keep it handy and accessible by keeping it in your personal item. This one is so, so important. And it's one that I make sure to do if my flight is any longer than like six hours. The longer the flight, the more essential. Keep a change of clothes, especially underwear, in your carry-on to change into. Sitting in one spot for so long with minimal movement, you're gonna get stale and kind of gross smelling and you're just not going to feel fresh. So if you have some clothes to change into at the end of your flight, it is going to make you feel so much better, more refreshed, and you're not gonna feel gross. It's going to be the most amazing thing, especially if you have somewhere to go right after you land.
if you have a longer layover, see if the airport has a shower you can use. I have showered in an airport once and it was the most amazing thing. It was on my way to Taiwan last summer. We had a four hour layover in the Itcheon South Korea airport and that airport was amazing guys. They had free showers to use. So we decided to take advantage of the fact they had showers and we showered and it felt so, so good. Oh, it felt so refreshing. Highly recommend, would recommend. About an hour before you land, I would recommend freshening up. Brush your hair, brush your teeth. If you wanna redo your makeup, do that. Put your contacts back in and just freshen up. Put your deodorant on, whatever you wanna do. More often times than not, I always end up going somewhere immediately after I land. So I always like to just feel not gross and just fresh and looking good and feeling good. So I always make sure I just freshen up relatively soon before I land. And my final long flight tip is actually on how to avoid jet lag. And that is to take a double dose of magnesium right before bed. It is going to help you and your body out so much. That is a wrap on today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that if you have any long flights coming up or just any sort of traveling in general, I hope these tips help you. Travel can be really stressful, especially if you're not as prepared and on top of it as possible. So I just wanted to share all of my things, things I've learned, things that I have just made sure that now every time I travel, I do, because it makes the traveling experience just so much better. If you guys have any long flight tips of your own, make sure to leave them in the comment section because you never know who they might help. And if you guys wanna know where I'm going and what I get up to, you guys can follow along on Instagram at Jessica Neistat, and I'll just be posting Instagram stories about what I get up to every day, and it'll just be fun. For today's quote of the day, I thought it was very fitting we do a travel-themed quote, and today's quote says, we live in a wonderful world that is full of beauty, charm, and adventure. There is no end to the adventures we can have if only we seek them with our eyes open. So think on that as we go into the week and think on that as you go onto your next adventure, your next trip, your next travel. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.